Hi guys, welcome back to the Buffalo Zoo. Today we have another special visitor for you guys to get a chance to learn a little bit more about some of our animals that we have here at the zoo. So today I have my friend Djibouti, who is a red-footed tortoise. We're getting a chance to have a little bit of time outside and get a little bit of exercise here in the grass. You might notice that Djibouti will stop and snack a little bit from time to time, and that's quite all right. We know that this grass is good and fine for him to be able to eat. I also have a couple of special treats for him to get a chance to eat as well. So Djibouti is a type of tortoise. Notice I didn't call him a turtle. Tortoises are like turtles that spend their time on land. You'll notice that he has this really nice high domed shell, lots of bumps on it. He's got really big blocky elephant style feet as he's walking around here on land. You won't see any flippers on a tortoise. Djibouti also uh, spends all of his time walking around and not any time down in water. He will occasionally have himself a nice little sit and soak. Do you want to try and have some of these blueberries here, bud? Let's see if you can catch a peek of them. Whoops, we lost one. Not my finger. Go for the blueberry. How about that? <laughs> so, um, Red-footed tortoises like Djibouti will eat mostly things that come from plants. They'll also eat fungi here and there. You don't want that? You want some of this? This is a piece of zucchini. How about, oh, just walked right into it. <laughs> um, so they will eat things that come mostly from plants. Uh, Red-footed tortoises in the wild might also opportunistically find uh, little bits of protein to eat here and there, but it's not very common for them. So turtles and tortoises have this really special adaptation on their backs that go with them everywhere they go. They have a shell. And shells are part of a turtle or tortoise's body. As I'm touching Djibouti, he can feel it as I touch him. This outer covering on his shell is made out of keratin. And keratin is the same stuff that your hair and fingernails are made out of. And it's constantly growing right along with him as he is growing too. Um, underneath this layer of keratin, they have a bone underneath. Yes, they do have a skeleton. How about some romaine? Do you want to try some of that? So they do have a skeleton and they do have bones, leg bones, shoulder bones, ribs. All of those things are connected inside of their shells. Many people will often use the saying to come out of your shell or turtle coming out of his shell, but they are completely connected to and attached to that shell. It's part of their body and it's constantly growing right along with them. They will hatch out of their eggs with a shell already on it. As a young turtle or tortoise, their shells are gonna be a little bit softer, a little bit easier to become prey for other animals. But as they grow and they eat, their shells start to harden up a little bit more over time. One really cool thing about turtles and tortoises is that they have these scoots along their shell and they all have the same number for those with scoots. So they typically will have five going down the middle and then eight going around on the outside for a total of 13. Now turtles and tortoises are reptiles, so their bodies are covered with scales. As you're looking at Djibouti's face up close as he's munching on his romaine lettuce, you'll notice all of those scales covering his head and neck and throat. And those are similar to those scales I was talking about on his shell. So they're made of keratin, just like that part of their body as well. As he's eating, you'll also see that he doesn't have any teeth. Turtles and tortoises have what we call a beak just like a bird. So as he's eating and munching, you'll notice he's got to kind of take smaller bites here and there and kind of mash it up and mush it up a little bit in his mouth to break it off into smaller pieces so that he can chew and swallow. Djibouti would probably prefer to just eat this whole piece of lettuce in one bite, but it's not gonna fit. So he uses that strong beak of his to be able to pull apart some of the romaine as he's eating it. He really, really likes this romaine. I couldn't tempt him that much with the blueberries, which I thought was gonna be his favorite today. 
Now, red-footed tortoises get their names because of these red colors that they have on their legs and on their feet. For male red-footed tortoises, they would use that as a way to show other males that they are the biggest and the best and the most colorful out of the other males. So with turtles and tortoises, they actually have two parts to their shells. I'll show you a little bit more of what that looks like in a second. They have this top part of their shell, which is called the carapace. And then they have the bottom part of their shell, which is called the plastron. And both of those parts are connected together to keep the turtle or tortoise safe all the way around its body. They only have holes or spots in their shells where their legs and arms and head can come out in the front and where their legs and tail can come out in the back. If a turtle or a tortoise is startled, they can pull those arms and legs and head into their shell so that they can be a little bit more protected. And there are a few types of turtles, like fox turtles, who actually have a hinge on the bottom of their plastron that allows them to close up tight inside of that shell to keep them even more protected. All right, Djibouti has just about run out of his romaine here. He made really short work of that lettuce. Um, we'll try and give him one more chance to see if he wants some of this zucchini. No, you just want every last little morsel until none of it remains. Do you guys like that? I have puns for days here. All right, once you finish that last little nugget, I'm gonna walk him back over to where I have some other things that I wanted to show you guys uh, before we say goodbye for the day. You wanna try this one last little nugget? There you go. Djibouti is a really great ambassador for other tortoises. He is a part of our education department, so he gets a chance to meet uh, students from all over Western New York, and he even participates in our distance learning programs. You wanna try that blueberry? We'll see if we could do it. Um, there you go. He just mushed that all up right at once. I'm try and do one more. I'm trying to make sure he doesn't get my fingers. There you go. <laughs> Smushed on the side of your face, silly. Try another. Um, oh, there you go. Good job. It's also really cool to see that they have tongues. Uh, a lot of people don't think of turtles and tortoises as having a tongue, uh, but they do. And it's really fun to see them use their mouths in that way. Think about it, they don't have hands or feet to be able to grab onto foods that they want to eat. So they have to be able to flex their long necks in order to reach some of those harder to reach foods that they really want. Just like Djibouti did right there. Okay, so we're gonna take Djibouti and take a little walk over here to see some other types of things that I wanted to share with you guys today. Just like we saw with our frog and toad video, I had you guys do a little bit of an experiment or a little activity at home where you compared the different types of animals between frogs and toads. So we had a chance to see Djibouti, a tortoise. I want you guys to see if you can compare and contrast tortoises to turtles. So this is a shell from a sea turtle. You notice it's very smooth and slick. This would help to make a sea turtle more hydrodynamic so that they can swim really fast through the water. So the water would just run right over their backs. When I was talking about Djibouti, I also mentioned how inside their shells, they have all of their body parts connected and attached. So when we look inside of this shell, you'll notice that their backbone is right along the top inside part of their shell. And coming off from the backbone, they also have their ribs. And all of these are completely connected and fused together to form that nice, hard, bony shell that covers their body. I'm gonna show you guys what a shell would look like without those keratin scales on top. Just set that down there. So this is what it looks like if all of the keratin was taken off of a shell. This is a really old snapping turtle shell that we've had in our collection for a while. And you'll notice that this is 100% bone all right here. 
I mentioned also that the other part of the shell is called the plastron. So this would be that underside of the shell that would help to protect their bellies, just in case they happen to flip over and have some other creature try to get at them. So now that you guys have had a chance to see some of the similarities and differences between turtles and tortoises, I hope you guys will be able to do a little activity doing a similar diagram to what you did with the frogs and toads and compare and contrast the turtles and the tortoises. I hope you guys enjoyed getting a chance to meet Djibouti and learning a bit more about turtles and tortoises today. Stay safe and have a great day. Bye-bye.